Good evening. Welcome to Spiritual Warriorship. And here we hear from His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami through his Spiritual Warrior books. We are presently in Spiritual Warrior 4. And um, chapter 5, titled Coping with Depression. And um, I'm not going to do a review because we have so much more to go. But I just want to remind you, he opens his chapters usually with something right on target for the subject. And then he goes into the subject in depth and gives us a clear picture of what it is and what brought it on and how it came about. And tonight we're going to go to healthy ways of coping with depression. But his first, he reminds us of the age of Kali, which we're in. Mm -hmm. And he quotes from Srimad Bhagavatam. 12.3.30 When there is a predominance of cheating, lying, sloth, sleepiness, violence, depression, lamentation, bewilderment, fear and poverty, that age is Kali the age of the mode of ignorance. Hmm? And his commentary on that is that the age of Kali or the age of quarrel, confusion, and ignorance is mentioned in many religious texts as a time of great sin and darkness. Increase in depression is a sign of the rapidly deteriorating civilization and an extremely frustrated and disappointed citizenry. I'm sure none of us can disagree with that. And we looked at mental illness on the rise and there were so many different um, sections. I hope you all are trying to get these books for yourself so you can go deeper and deeper into the material or hear it again if it's not coming through clear or to remind you, yes. Can you repeat that sentence you just... What sentence? That you just read. Repeat it? Yeah. The comment on the Age of Kali by Bhakti Tirtha Swami? Okay. He states... Now I read from Srimad Bhagavatam 12, chapter 12, no, Canto 12, chapter 3, text 30. And I'll repeat that. This is from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 12, chapter 3, text 30, which states, when there is a predominance of cheating, lying, sloth, sleepiness, violence, depression, lamentation, bewilderment, fear and poverty, that the age of college the age of the mode of ignorance. But we're moving here. Those of you who do come and are out there listening, we're moving towards the mode of goodness into transcendental Krishna consciousness, gratefully. Bhakti Tirtha Swami's commentary on that particular verse and chapter is that the age of Kali or the age of quarrel, confusion, and ignorance is mentioned in many religious texts as a time of great sin and darkness. Increase in depression 
is a sign of rapidly deteriorating civilization and is extremely frustrated and disappointed citizenry. Okay, that's a good enough look at depression, which is the title of the chapter, Coping with Depression. And as I said, it's no time to review, and I'm hoping you all are endeavoring to get the books yourself. As I said, they're at krishna.com store, or the publisher, Hari Nama Press dot org. Okay. Yes. Is there something that you read that said, that refers to other texts? Other texts? Yeah. Did you read something? No, I saw. No, did I you? mentioned books. Just getting the book. But did you read something? Just this, now? Yeah. The since sentence. I did not. Yeah. The sentence. No, I just now read the two pieces that I read when I came on. Coping with Depression, we're in Spiritual Warrior 4, Chapter 5, title, Coping with Depression. I read the quote he gave from Canto 12, Chapter 3, Chapter 30, and then I read his commentary on that. Is someone asking for something else? Um, David has asked twice what other texts is there in the sentence does it does it say anything no I other, just read to text? you this I have read nothing about any other text or is I, there a reference to no other okay. text not in what I just read okay okay can we go on she okay And as I said, I'm not going to repeat what we went through over the last, I think we've been on this two weeks now. You know, we went over types of depression, causes of depression, biological factors, heredity, maternity blues, CEO depression. He took us through quite a bit to make us understand and maybe even somewhat knowledgeable about what can cause it or why it's there and let us look at it the influence of subtle entities and he even had a whole section that women are more prone to depression and as I say tonight we want to look at what he calls Arthur calls healthy ways to cope with depression. So it's not a hopeless thing. He says we now want to spend some time looking at solutions or at least ways of dealing with depression in a healthy manner. First of all, we have a need for spiritually minded therapists. Or therapists who are appreciative of the spiritual culture. And most importantly, who are actually following such a culture because you can't give and help anyone in something that you're not familiar with. And if you just study what's in the books out there, when you meet a person who may be going through the dark night of the soul, as we've read many times, or is endeavoring to begin to follow a higher mode in, in living and expressing their lives, it's strange to one who doesn't have an idea of what it means. So he says that although some of these mental challenges are psychological or biological, other mental disturbances stem from the mind, which means that talk therapy can help a person through. 
Now, however, it can be dangerous to go to a therapist who does not understand or appreciate the spiritual dimensions because they can make our situation even worse. Now, for instance, here's an example. It's so wonderful. It doesn't leave us hanging. For instance, when a saintly person <coughs> excuse me get a tickle excuse me when a saintly person starts speaking in a spirit of humility the average therapist will categorize and begin to treat the problem as low self-esteem they do not understand that humility is a part of the wealth of a saintly person. The saint's gratitude and closeness to God ultimately make him or her humble. The aspiring spiritualist may be fixed in simplicity and renunciation, but the therapist may see this as antisocial behavior. The saint may be pursuing chastity and celibacy, but the therapist may see this as unhealthy sexual repression. The list can go on and on. But for these reasons, there's a need to have godly devotees with a special expertise so that they can serve their own communities and keep the devotional focus. Okay? I remember one, one young lady who did go into um, studying he, even at that time, he suggested that she study psychology and go further. So to have somebody in the community who spirit, had spiritual vent. Now, the first thing is maintain body and soul together. What are we looking at now? What he calls healthy ways to cope with depression. So listen carefully, if it's not, if you're not going through it, you may know someone going through it or live with someone going through it. And sometimes gaining this knowledge and understanding, you can help. Now he says that sometimes we think that we can solve all of our problems simply through the execution of rituals and actually such practices can provide the essential help if we perform them with sufficient depth and purity. However, since such depth is rare, additional help is needed to assist the practitioner in the removal of various blocks. Now this is the main reason we are offering this book, he's telling us, uh, to the international community. He says we especially want to help aspiring transcendentalists obtain better results in their practices and gain better control of the mind by eradicating its enemies. Don't forget this spiritual war book is called Enemies of the Mind. 
the mind as your enemy. Now, as spiritual institutions and communities expand all around the world, we need to maintain body and soul together. The Vaishnav Saint Bhakti Vinod Thakur explained that in order to develop a healthy community, we must balance four needs. And he states them as this. One, we need to take care of the body. You know, we have the saying, we're not the body, we're spirit soul. But that soul is in that body, as you know. And it's through the body that the soul can perform the activities of service. So therefore, it needs a healthy vehicle so that it can function and we must not abuse our bodies. Two, we need to properly stimulate the mind. We need to study the scriptures in depth. We mean to need to discuss, have discussions so that we can be alert to the meanings and understand more deeply what they mean because they all have messages for us to function on a higher level as a spirit soul, eternal spirit soul in that body. We need to have a sense of social well-being. Prabhupada, if you read his books, he's constantly reminding us the importance of association of devotees so that we're with people of like mind. We're helping to remind each other of the holy name and about the Lord himself. And we need to study spiritual texts. Now, this is suggested by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Now, Bhakti Tirtha Swami tells us that as we embark on a devotional path and experience challenges that go along with normal association, we should also seek out help and, if possible, search for those in the community who have a little more understanding of the physical and psychological needs as well as the spiritual aspect. He starts to, he tells us now about the enemies of the mind. And again, I like to remember back when we studied Spiritual Warrior 3, uh, the 12 qualities of a spiritual warrior. And the first one was sense control and mastery of the mind. And he gave us such a wonderful breakdown of how to cope with that mind and how to bring it in so that it doesn't become our enemy and not get us confused, okay? If you have Spiritual Warrior 3, I think it's chapter, um, I don't remember, chapter 7 maybe, but it's entitled 12 quality of a spiritual warrior. So he gives us here now, imagine a situation in which six enemies constantly surround you and incessantly wait for the opportune moment to attack when you put your guard down. As soon as you become lackadaisical, they will swiftly approach. However, we can try to sufficiently reinforce ourselves and strengthen our weak spots knowing that Maya will attack us in those weak areas. The six enemies are Lust, anger, greed, bewilderment, 
intoxication and envy. These are some of the ways in which depression, anxiety, and gloom and frustration affect the mind. Now, if we know the enemy's hiding place, we can keep our distance instead of remaining in an insecure position or allowing the enemy to constantly ambush us. And the enemies, of course, hide in the mind. Many mental breakdowns deal with the mindset of lust because unsatisfied lust turns into anger and then turns into great illusion and confusion. And if you're reading Bhagavad Gita, you know there's a whole section on that where Krishna speaks on that and addresses it. For some people, it even causes them to experience neurosis, psychosis, schizophrenia, and so on. However, some people experience so much anger that it turns into hypertension, ulcers, physical diseases, and even violence to others and themselves. Now, we can also understand depression as anger turn towards oneself. In our discussion on anger, we already acknowledge that anger always has a victim either others or ourselves. You know, in this Spiritual Warrior Book 4, there's a whole chapter on managing anger. He doesn't miss a beat with these books to get us stronger and find our weakness, and weak spots, and clear them up. People often cannot keep a balance between their intellect and their mind. Consequently, they have ongoing mental challenges that may last for the rest of their lives. If you cannot keep a balance between your intellect and your mind. Now he tells us that enviousness also creates an imbalance within us. We should be param dukhi dukkha dukhi kripam buddhi, which means that we should feel the misery of others as well as their happiness. We should feel happy for another person when we see something positive happen in their life. Actually, we should feel the same happiness for them that we would feel for our own selves in the same situation. This type of mindset can help prevent depression and mental disturbance. If we learn how to weed out negative tendencies, we will find that it will lead to some wonderful solutions. So his books are like guidebooks. Of course, he's saying also that if you're having trouble doing that yourself, you try to find a, a therapist who has some spiritual culture and can understand where you are, what you're working on. If we find ourselves in a state of depression, 
we can also examine our degree of self-centeredness or selfishness. Huh? That means we have to take some responsibility. We have to take time and look at ourselves. He's constantly telling us that we have to go within. There are two ways to play God, he says. We play God when we see ourselves as superior and as the most important person. We also play God when we place ourselves in the center by thinking of ourselves as the most inferior or most unfortunate person. It's interesting, isn't it? Other people play God by considering that everything revolves around their problems. If you ask them, how are you today? I'm learning how to, certain people, I don't ask that, but to tell you the truth, I'm learning. How are you? What will happen? How will they respond, huh? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. I have a headache. I got a terrible stomach ache. Oh, it's pain has been going on in my leg. I need a raise. And my son is giving me such problems. And what is that? They're focusing on themselves. Bhakti Tittu Swami says, however, if we focus too much on our misfortunes, it will reinforce our problems rather than eliminate them. Hmm? Selflessness is one way of decreasing our problems. If we try to help someone else or try to go beyond our immediate situation, we will see that God will give us the help we need and even take away our own particular issues. Now this is saying and praying that with the so-called problems, you know, I've got this, I've got that, and the other, you haven't stopped your sadhana or chanting or reading or hearing from Shilpa Because you have to keep that going so that the Lord is attentive to you and will give you the help you need. Now he says, for instance, if you manage an institutional co corporation and you see an employee doing well, you will give them even more facility to increase their work. If someone is not doing such a nice job, you call them out and maybe even withdraw them from the company and their position, from their position first. And if they still continue, you may just, what, take them out, fire them. Similarly, listen now, he's making an analogy. Similarly, when God sees a devotee trying to work hard on his behalf, he will then remove any obstacles so that the person can serve better. So not just dwelling on yourself. Others are having problems. Are you trying to help others or serve others? And of course, serve God in some way. Rather than just focusing on the obstacles, we should proactively try to find a way to increase our quality of service. 
Krishna promises that he will maintain what we have and carry what we lack. And I think in that verse he starts out by worshipping those who worship me. So this is, see, this is the spiritual warrior book. And you see he puts right in front of you what can be the problem, what is the problem, what causes. But in pulling you out, he's turning us inside. Check ourselves and service to the Lord, which is what Krishna consciousness, bhakti, bhakti yoga is all about. Linking back to God through loving service. So Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 9.22, but those who always worship me with exclusive devotion, meditating on my transcendental form, to them I carry what they lack and I preserve what they have. This is the Lord speaking to you. And I love Bhagavad Gita. Just hearing his instructions and his way of reminding us how he loves us and protects us and cares for us. So he has made this promise. And Bhakti Chitta Swami says he will fulfill it. The author continues, Depression means that we are focusing too much on our problems and withholding our love from others. In um, Spiritual Warrior 2, in the introduction, when he's telling us who we are and reminding us of being eternal beings, and he states that the soul is made for love. And that's what's within all of us. So the love is there and we're to share it with others. However, he says, as we give more love to others, we will never have a shortage of love coming to us. What well, is in the scripture, the Bible language is, as you give, so shall you receive. That's a universal law. This is the nature of karma. If we wait for others to care for us, and love us, we will remain in a state of impoverishment. However, as we try to extend our service and love, we will find that the depression will decrease. So what has he told us here? And for us to stop and check, are we being selfish, self-centered, every thinking we're the center of everything and things aren't going right, it's everybody else's fault or not mine. We have to learn to give and share and serve. He now goes on, depression also results from a lack of forgiveness. Sometimes people have genuine issues, but they have not yet forgiven another person. Now he says, as we said earlier, the mind affects the body and anger can even cause the body to attack its own cells. Mindfulness. We just finished reading that. Was that here? Yeah, I think. Mindfulness is another beneficial practice that can help us free, help free us from depression and mental challenges. It will help us constantly reflect 
at all times, all times, you hear that? On God, who makes all of these arrangements for us. Hmm? We use that expression, I'm sure, many times. God is the controller. God is the arrangement, ranger, or he makes a range. But when it isn't, things aren't going our way, suddenly we forget that and think there's something wrong. God is ignoring us or so-and-so is not being nice to me. But he tells us it'll help. Const if we constantly reflect at all times on God and know it's God who's making the arrangements. And we might add something he uses, the expression he uses many times. God And God doesn't give us more than we can bear. He says when, when we go through another difficult period, we will be able to remember the previous help he gave us and we will have faith that he can help us even more in the future. And that's where that mindfulness comes in and being alert and aware from day to day not only what you're thinking, what your mind is, what you're allowing your mind to throw at you, or how you're using your mind and intellect to go to another level, but to also know that you can have choices and can change the nonsense the mind is throwing at you. And as he said, if you're constantly thinking of God and knowing that God makes the arrangement and is controlling, and he'll help you, and you will see his help if you are mindfully aware. I was uh, telling a story today. I was at a study group. I had a, 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 a realization came through so strongly. Uh, last week, I think it was, uh, two weeks ago. And it seems so simple that I almost was embarrassed to tell it, but I'll tell it here too, because this reminds me of it. Of uh, One day when I turned on my computer, the internet wasn't working. So I called Windstream, I guess they're the services or the providers, whatever you call them. And they ran me through some things and told me that uh, some cable, Ethernet cable was out. And like she said, oh, you can go to the store and buy one. I said, I don't drive. By the time I find a drive, isn't anything else. She said, well, what we can do, we'll send you a new modem and... And, and the cable will be in there, so if the cable doesn't work, you can hook up the modem. And that sh seems to be what the problem is, so we'll send it out today. Okay, won't go through, I went through the thing of what it'll cost and what they'll take off and put on anyway, financially. So, the first thing came to my mind when I hung up was when this comes, how will I put this, take this, take off and put on and suppose I got to hook up the motor. I can't get down on the floor to unplug anything from under the desk and I don't like this technology stuff. I went through that in my head and then I it was on its way so I realized no need to panic about that. Somehow it would work out. So the first couple of days, it was good because... I couldn't get on my computer, which two things. My realization was how attached to it I was. As soon as I thought, sometimes thought of making a phone call. Oh, it's on my contact list and my email. Oh, so-and-so, what's their ad? I don't, it was amazing. So I find, I settled down two days mail. And then, I don't know, whatever day, still in that week, I went to the temple. Someone took me to the temple. And the person who took me, she, I, my understanding was that she would be there with, along, you know, after class and would bring me home. 
after class and everything, I started looking for her, and I couldn't find her. And I went outside the temple itself looking, and somebody said, what are you, what's going on? You all right? I said, no, I can't find my driver to take me home. And the young lady said, oh, my husband will take you. And she called him and told him, and it was nice. He said, sure. And he brought me home. And when we got here, there was a box outside my door. Picked it up. It was from Windstream. And I started telling him why the box had come. He said, oh, no problem. I'll hook it up. Hmm? He opened the box, took out all these pieces and cords and cables and things, and click here, pulled out, pushed in. And whatever, when he turned it on or did ever, the internet was back. I know that much technology. I was so thankful. And I think there was some other little glitch in the computer I needed help with. I told him about it, and he went ahead and he fixed it. And it was working fine, and he left. When I sat down, I started... Well, first of all, I think the first thing I said was, thank you, Krishna, for the help. But I looked at how the process of how the help came. And the stronger realization was, I hadn't cried out for help consciously from Krishna. And yet, this little jiva soul, he recognized that I would need help with this computer and his bhakti tithya swami says god who makes all arrangements for us just set up a process that got someone here to 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 fix what needed to be fixed to take care because that was on a friday when that box came because i was thinking if it doesn't get here I'll have to cancel the Friday night program. Or if it gets here and I have to try and put it together, will I have it right or who else could I call? But I didn't, I usually I'm, I'm praying to God all the time. Please help me, guide me, direct me, have the right person at the right time to <laughs> wear them out, you know? But this time, so reading this and hearing this, that if we're mindful and if we reflect on God at all times and know that he's making the arrangements and controlling the situation, my realizing that day, it happened without me making a deliberate cry, God help me, which was powerful. So these, these concepts and principles that are in these books, please take them seriously. Put them to practice in your life and then become mindful and see how even the smallest thing like getting your computer fixed happens or whatever it is, it happens. He says that faith is most important. Now, we've just looked at forgiveness and mindfulness. I hope you didn't miss the points in that. Now, we will not have the ability to persevere without faith. But we cannot fake faith. when certain aspects of a person's life are not going well, his or her faith does get weaker. This incident, by the way, a realization, I mean, it was a deep realization. I feel increased my faith and trust in the Lord. Okay? Because just the way it happened. Be and then when I called my friend who didn't wasn't there, she said that she had told me that she had to go right home because she was cooking something for the deity later in the day. 
I do not remember. So therefore, I went looking for her and didn't try to make another arrangement for a ride because she wasn't coming back. But I feel that was all of the process to get me to somebody who would get here and the box was there and could fix the computer. You see what I mean? It may seem oversimplified, but that an incident to increase faith and to know that Krishna is always available for us. The Lord is always available. So he's telling us now that we will not have the ability to persevere without faith. But we can't fake it. When certain aspects of a person's life are not going well, his or her faith does get weaker. Our faith relates to what has happened in the past, past, what is happening in the present, and more directly with what we are anticipating in the future. Now, in our past, if our path has been rough, and our present is incoherent, our faith in the future will be weak. However, if we see positive events around us that we feel good about, we will have strong faith. And again, just based on this experience I have, if you are mindful and you're, you're serious about your spiritual life, you will begin to see how things are working in your favor. But you may have to go through some struggle or what appears to be maybe a disappointment. But it's a part of the process of the arrangement of the Lord. And what he's saying here. If you have faith, you can persevere through it to see the outcome. So they say, Prabhupada used to say, we've read, that Krishna consciousness is simple, simple for the simple. But it can be practiced. And this is why Bhakti Chitra Swami's book seems to simplify it for us in simple everyday language to practice. He says, I'll repeat, if we see positive events around us that we feel good about, we will have strong faith. Only a real person can maintain strong faith when they have had a difficult past and a rocky presence. In our communities, we want to create environments that will energize us and help us increase our faith. And I'm going to stop there tonight. We've gotten quite a bit, haven't we? I think so. To work on ourselves. To cope with those moments of, um, of depression or discontent or frustration. Huh? What did some of the things he told us? We just finished forgiveness and mindfulness. We talked about faith. Talked about relinquished selfishness. Did you understand that? What he calls it playing God. Did you think you're the most important thing or whatever your problem is, it's the most important thing and everybody should, what, bow down? And <laughs> but the thing is, if you take your mind off yourself and offer yourself to serve others, because there's always someone with a worse situation. I've learned that and I'm sure many of you have, if you paid attention. So if we try to help someone else or try to go beyond our immediate situation, what will happen? We will see that God will give us the help we need. 
And the more you see that, the more your faith impro improves, increases, and faith is most important. So, any comments, any questions? How many in the chat room, by the way? Two, David and Bhuvan Mohan. David and Bhuvan Mohan. Hadi Mohan. Hadi Bo, welcome. I'm glad you're there. Any questions? I have a question. All right. Um, how do you find the balance or, yeah, between, you know, when you are depressed or when we are depressed and you know, kind of getting involved with other people's lives and thinking that we're helping them, but really it can be like a scapegoat for not looking at ourselves and working on ourselves. We can, you know, make others like kind of a scapegoat that, you know, we're too busy to look at ourselves and address, you know, some really core important things for us to make you know, deeper progress because we're, you know, too busy, you know, maybe going to festivals, listening to class or whatever it is, or helping another person. How do you, you well, know, How do you help another person if you haven't helped yourself based on some of these practices and principles to see what happens by using these to bring about a, a, a balance in your own life then you can as he said here serve others and you can serve them by your experience of having worked with the enemies of the mind and he's given step by step how to do that how this whole thing about selfishness or is it only all about me 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 or will I take some time to help someone? And if you're helping someone from a place of truly caring and wanting to help them, he keeps saying that God will help. When God sees a devotee trying to work hard on his behalf, his meaning God's behalf, service, serving, he will then remove any obstacles so he will remove any obstacle so that the person can serve better. So it's about being God conscious, if you will, God aware. Um, rather than just focusing on the obstacles, we should proactively try to find ways to increase our quality of service. So if you're doing, taking these steps, he says God promises that he will maintain what we have and carry what we lack. And of course we read that first. So it's about reaching out to others, but practicing these, these, these steps, as he said. I like this whole thing about playing God. We play God when we see ourselves as superior or as the most important person. We also play God when we place ourselves in the center by thinking of ourselves as the most inferior or most unfortunate person. And he's telling us here though, if you try to help someone else or try to go beyond your immediate situation, you will see that God will give us the help we need. So does that answer your question? Um, a part of it. Okay. I just, I'm just thinking that I can think of a couple of examples where people have dedicated their life to helping other people. Mm -hmm. And at the end, or not the end, but at some point they feel they still have all these, you know, issues, and they feel empty because, like, all they that helped others. Yeah, all all of the attention and energy have been for other people, and they haven't seen what's happening with them. They're too busy, you know. But helping it's how other they're people. helping? Are they helping with love? He says, when we give more love to others. 
we will never have a shortage of love coming to us. And everybody's seeking love. And if love starts coming back to us, we will be satisfied. So it's how we're giving it, um, not with a motive, but because we're that part of us, our spiritual self, is made for love. It's all Krishna's within every heart. And the love is there. So he says depression means that we are focusing too much on our own problem with holding our love from others. Does that help? It's about love. And not mushy, mushy, ooey, gooey love. It's about a pure love from within and coming from God as we offer to serve Him and want to help others. And then when you're mindful, and again, a person that feels that way, they've given and given and haven't gotten anything back. That's not unconditional love. And then how do you feel about the person you've helped if you feel still not satisfied or they've turned against you or haven't responded to the level that you feel for what you've given, they haven't given back. Then it's about forgiving them because that's where they are. And if you love them unconditionally and purely, it's okay that's where they are because you know your connection with God and you have seen how God responds to you. Once you see enough of these, these responses from the Lord as he tells you. Next week we're gonna start with gratitude as a way. Are we grateful enough? We're gonna look at the importance of attitude, but it's time, Any? are you okay with that? That's my technician I'm talking to over here. Any of you out there have a question or comment because it's time to bring down the curtain on tonight's show. Any comment or question, move on or David? No. Uh, David just said good question and answer, but pure but pure? You don't understand? What do you mean by that, David? You like the exchange we just had? And, but pure, you feel it's sincere. Is he replying? That's what he meant. That's what he meant. Okay, thank you for being there, David. Thank you for your comment. And Bhuvan Mohan, I hope all is well with you. Any more comments? I think we'll now close for the night. Bhuvan Mohan said, um, thank you, Mother and Johnny, for another beautiful class. It helped me a lot. And Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Have a blessed week. And put these principles to practice in your daily life. And watch what happens. All right? Happy Christmas.